Thank you for being here. And uh, let's start with this. You know, I'm European. I like to go fancy. Uh, this is Julius Caesar, uh, depicted during the Renaissance, uh, 51 years after what we consider the date of uh, Christ. So, 51 common era, Julius Caesar crossed the Rhine and conquers North Europe. Uh, what we now call France at that time was populated by more than 800 tribes and uh, the Roman Empire was just in the south and in the Mediterranean area of Europe and has a very interesting characteristic from the army they had. The army was extremely, extremely organized. From the last uh, footman to the first general, everybody knew what they were doing and everybody was compact. On the other end, there were 800 tribes that were completely scattered in the land. And when they decided to invade, the Roman Empire made sure to apply a strategy called divide et impera, that means divide and conquer, making sure that none of them were communicated with each other so they could not form alliances and, um, and be competitive on the ground. And actually it went that way. So the Roman Empire wiped out one after the other with no major effort and they got it to uh, the north of Europe. 2,000 years after that, Europe has interesting landmarks. So if you travel in Europe and you go to major cities or even small towns, you find uh, relics of that time. You find buildings that they are coming from that era. And uh, Europe is still something that we see very fragmented. We see it very fragmented way more when we are there than when we see it from outside. Uh, only after the, uh, World War II and from the ashes of a continent that was uh, completely destroyed, things started to change in that sense. Uh, in uh, 1957, we had the Treaty of Rome where a few countries, like six, seven countries, they got together and they decided to start have something uh, like economic growth together. Ten years after, we had the European Community and uh, only in 1993, we have something that is uh, what we have now, the European, uh, the European Union. And uh, two years after, the Schengen Agreement to, uh, started to, uh, to affect. And uh, what, is the, what is the consequence of all of these things? That, for European citizen now traveling across borders is free. So we don't have passport control when we go between Austria and Germany, we don't have passport control between Italy and Austria and other countries. Um, so we travel freely across borders and uh, we can purchase with the same currency in the entire continent. Almost. <laughs> Almost. Not every country is in the Eurozone, but most of them are. And even countries that they don't have Euro as their currency, they accept payments in, in Euro near the border and sometimes even in the capital city. And uh, uh, the real game changer is, is the fact that we all speak the same language. Europe has a common language for every country. Not really. Nope. Nine and noon. Uh, we don't. Every country is holding really strong to their, to their language. Because the language is very radicated in the culture and the culture is very connected with the language. And no one wants to give away that the roots that they have. And it's fine that way. However, it creates problems when you have to talk to each other. And uh, so uh, many different uh, languages are still a European struggle. We still find those uh, borders that are not there anymore when we trade. They're not there anymore when we buy, but they're there when we try to talk to each other. And uh, if there's one thing that we do really well is at WordPress is we rocket languages. So that was a big problem. And WordPress started solving that um, and was really good at that. So we have a lot of locales that they start, that they, are, that they start first as languages, but then as sub-languages, or because locales are, located, are um, identifiable as a place, not a language. But still, we had a lot of problem communicating with each other. We had a lot of problem to understand a platform that was in English. And so, the initial sparkle of many European communities in WordPress starts with the need of solving the language barrier. 
My name is Luca Salatoni. I work at Automatic. I am part of the Italian community, and uh, I am a co-organizer of WorkCamp Europe. And today, I'm going to show you how WorkCamp Europe um, helped local communities to, um, to reinvigorate. So the first WorkCamp Europe happened in uh, uh, Leiden, the Netherlands, in 2013. The second one in Sofia, Bulgaria. And the third one this year in Sevilla, Spain. And the next one will be in Vienna, Austria, um, in June. What was the WorkCamp scene in Europe before WorkCamp Europe? Um, WorkCamps were supposed to be hyper-local events because WorkCamps, they spring out of meetups and uh, meetups are very eradicated in the land. So we had WorkCamps that they were identifiable as a city, sometimes as a country, but most of the time they were just addressing communities, they were metropolitan areas. And WorkCamp Europe, for the first time, uh, tried to do this, to create something that was bigger than just the sum of the parts. And the first group of organizers, uh, they were coming from different um, communities, from different countries, uh, they said, well, why don't we do something together? Why don't we just try to do something bigger? And they, they spoke with the foundation, they got that approved, and they started this adventure uh, with a question in their head, with a big question mark. There was, how is it going to go? How's gonna, uh, how will Europe react? Are people going to come to the event? Are people going to just know about it? Are they going to travel? Which language? Are, is the Italian community interested in an event in English? So there was this big question mark. Because, you know, you organize an event, you put together the venue and the catering and all this stuff, and then you end up just by yourself. Uh, it's not pleasant. So this is the big, the big fear of every organizer, but in that case, it was really, really strong. So uh, I heard about WorkCamp Europe in 13, um, and, uh, and I was like, oh, I'm going to go check it out. Went there as an attendee, and that man over there was like, I need volunteers. Join. And so I started volunteering. And that was the first time that I volunteered at a work camp. And um, it was amazing. It was, uh, it was a life-changing experience for me. And since then, I tried to contribute as much as I could to all the followings. Um, so that event started something. For people that were there, things were were pretty interesting because it was not before. Uh, before it was not like that. Um, but something bigger happened after. Something that was not um, in the plan was, was expected maybe, but not at that scale. The local communities started to become stronger. They got really, really better. And, uh, and there are a few reasons. Uh, if we look at that now, after three years, running for the fourth year, uh, we, I identified a few reasons why um, they got better. So the first one is that WorkCompure offers a stage. A stage that is just not the size of the stage, but is the potential of the stage. When you have an event that covers an entire continent, uh, you have speakers that they can address a way more div diverse audience. You have people coming from different countries, you have different cultures, you have to uh, you have to address all of them. And so for speakers, it's very, very engaging being in that stage. At the same time, um, people that they contribute with uh, presentations, they, uh, uh, for the first time, they have this large audience in front of them, like rooms that are bigger and more diverse and more, the feedback is different. You usually talk to your own, um, uh, to your own community, so probably you know most of them, and then suddenly you are in front of a wider community where you don't know many of them, or it's the first time that you get to know them. Um, so the stage was the first, was the first thing that happened, because during the event is the major uh, part of the event. But then after that, things started to get even more interesting, because WorkCamp Europe sparks contribution. My name is Petya and I am from Sofia, Bulgaria. I help translate WordPress and I help people who translate WordPress. I am a part of the Polyglot team. 
Um, we have more than 70 locales that uh, are associated with places in Europe and languages that are spoken in Europe. Well, there are languages that have different types of different different locales for formal and informal, and there are locale specific, there are location specific languages as well. We have German, but we also have Swiss German. We have Spanish, but we also have a lot of different Spanish locales depending on the location where people speak Spanish. Uh, so locales are not just languages. There are languages that are spoken in this particular place, and Europe has a lot of places that speak maybe speak the same language, but they speak it in a different way because of the location. I think WordCamp Europe uh, opened up the contribution gate to a lot of people, and uh, what it what it created was the spirit of togetherness that allowed a lot of people to go to different WordCamps and participate in different communities. So that also meant that people felt a lot more at ease to actually start to contribute to WordPress. WordCamp Europe did something very, very important for the WordPress community uh, in Europe because there are so many countries and so many active communities, but before 2013, they weren't really talking to each other. Uh, there were people that were chatting online and contributing to WordPress uh, and talking uh, all the time that had never seen each other. and. Uh, WordCamp Europe 2013 changed that. You put a face to an avatar, you put a smile to like the reactions that you're used to uh, in online interactions. And it becomes a different relationship. It becomes something very, very different and a lot stronger. And WordCamp Europe did that for a lot of the people who were already contributing. But the, the thing that it did for me in particular, and I believe for a lot of new people that were just getting introduced to the community is that it just, made you realize how many wonderful people were involved with this project and uh, made us feel welcome and made us want to stay uh, to, and to contribute more. So WordCamp Europe 2013 is, for me, is the reason I am so active in the community today. So a lot of people, they, they were experiencing this idea of contribution. I was uh, attending WordCamps even before, but for the first time, for instance, I had a Contributors' Day right after. And, um, and after that, I've seen Contributors' Day coming up uh, more often, more frequently, connected to other work camps. Um, then WordCamp Europe leads by example, because when you organize an event of that size, when you go over the usual 150, 250 people, you go bigger, you need to have practices that, um, that are more open. You cannot just pull off an event of 600, 700, 1,000 people, just like you would do for 150. So uh, we had open applications for, uh, for many of the roles in the organization. We had applications for volunteers. We had applications for speakers. We had applications for, now we have applications for cities. So if you want to host your ne the next uh, work in Europe, you have to apply as a city. And there is a process, a very transparent process, and uh, all these practices um, help people to feel part of a whole, help people to understand that it's not about who you know or about who you work with, but it's something open. You can take part of it. And uh, now our computer is organized with a, a global team that covers all the, um, all the parts that can be done remotely because the team is distributed. It's, uh, and then there is a local team that takes part, that, that takes care of the logistics for everything that happens on site. And that happens through uh, um, an open application and very transparent practices. Then, uh, as I told you before, the communities before uh, Work Camp Europe were very strong sometimes, but um, don't forget there were countries that not many years ago were at conflict with each other in Europe. And if we go to Serbia and Croatia and Slovenia and Bosnia, all that area uh, faced big challenges not long time ago. However, uh, check this out. My name is Milan and I'm one of the founders of WordPress Serbia. As strange as it sounds, but that is how we all met it was back in 2013 and the first WordCamp Europe where a couple of my friends and colleagues introduced a couple of guys from Serbia and Croatia and uh, at that time in Serbia there was only one 
meetup organized by Vladimir, the founder of Manage WP. So as soon as I got back to Serbia, uh, we started brainstorming the organization of the future uh, WordPress meetups. So when the hundred people showed up for the second meetup, we, we were sure that we did a great job. Uh, we had to organize a couple of WordPress meetups in order to get uh, WordCamp Belgrade approved. So um, it will turn out uh, that the WordCamp Europe just started the whole avalanche of all the uh, IT conferences, and not just in Serbia, but the whole region. Um, there are a lot of uh, groups derived from a WordPress Serbia group, uh, groups like Customer Happiness, uh, groups like uh, Hosting Serbia. So we surely own that success to first WordCamp Europe. After the first one in uh, in Leiden, there were two more, and this is from this is a picture from Bulgaria, from Sofia, and uh, this is just a group of volunteers from Sevilla uh, last June. We had this experience of people that were getting more and more and more entangled in the mesh of work in Europe. As soon as people started to get in contact, they could not leave. There was no way to send them away. Um, it happened to many of us that are part of the organization team, but it happened to people to apply. As soon as they got volunteers for the first one, they started to apply and to be volunteers or speakers or being even more involved for the following ones. It happened at every level, including the attendance. Um, we had people that they went to Leiden and they were traveling for the first time to go to a work camp. And after that, they started traveling to other work camps because they realized that in this opportunity that op the Europe offers, you're never too far from another capital. So if you live in a capital, probably in a couple of hours, you go to any other capital, uh, made the Europe to be even smaller. And uh, for communities that were already very strong, but a little isolated, also, came a big change. My name is Casper. I live in Potsdam in Germany. Currently, I'm a blog editor on dewordpress.org. And I recently started joining the forums, forums team on dewordpress.org also. The German community started out in 2004 with uh, translating WordPress into German, which made WordPress very popular in Germany and in German-speaking speaking areas very quickly. That same team that started translating WordPress also founded their own platform in German. It seemed to happen that uh, the German community from the outside looked quite introverted. I, I oftentimes heard from people outside of Germany that we are perceived as very organized from the outside. Um, we are, I think we are also often perceived as skeptic and harsh critics. Um, but we're also very hardworking and um, committed individuals here. Regarding collaboration on a US-centered platform like WordPress.org, Germans can get very suspicious. Also regarding leadership, I would say, in a self-organizing community, Germans tend to have quite a different take on leadership and hierarchies compared to uh, maybe you guys uh, over there in the US. We didn't feel belonging really over here and WordCamp Europe changed that completely. Suddenly there was a feeling of belonging. I would say the German community was immensely impacted by the spirit of a WordCamp Europe. For those people who went there actually, I heard comments like it was a true eye-opener and it was like a wall come down experience for them. Realizing that there are so many more people speaking WordPress. I'm not locked into this community. I can just travel and meet like-minded people all over the place, talk about WordPress and learn and contribute and exchange and make friends. The good thing about us is when you finally gain us as friends, you have us for a lifetime. Nowadays, members from the German community contribute on makewordpress.org and they found meetups and organized WordCamps themselves and travel to other WordCamps. And there's a great exchange um, with other communities in Europe. 
for me personally, um, the whole WordCamp Europe experience was life changing and is still today. And I can feel that as it, it, it opened up something in me and um, I'm seeing the world differently today. Sitting here now actually and record this video for you guys and being someone uh, from the German community uh, talking to you guys and um, sharing things from over here. I think that wouldn't be have uh, that that wouldn't be possible without having WordCamp Europe first and um, had having had that experience of opening up as a community. So um, yeah, thanks for your time. Thanks for listening. I think that's the thing I got for you today. Have a great WordCamp. WordCamp Europe next year would be in Vienna on the 24, 25, and 26 of June. And we still have tickets. Not many, <laughs> but we have them, right? Uh, the application for speakers is still open. The application for volunteers is still open. We still have a few tickets, so hurry up. They didn't want me to say that, but hurry up. And. Um, for everything you want to know about it and for uh, accommodation, travels, go to europe.workcamp.org. It's a little cut off, but you can find it. And uh, thank you very much. Thank you. We have one. Check that out. Do you think there will be a WordCamp Earth in the future? Uh, of course. As soon as we colonize Mars, <laughs> we can have WordCamp Earth. Uh, yeah, that would be great. Who's up for organizing it? <laughs> Who's up for sponsoring? <laughs> Look at that. The usual suspects. So, uh, yeah, sorry, please. So um, normally, like the WordCamp, they had, like this. You know, normally this this tracks. And then it closer. Oh, thanks. That's too close. That's too close. Uh, so, how do you, um, how does uh, having like a multi language uh, like group of attendees influence the tracks? You guys have like, how, how do you handle that? So, like, it's work, work on Vienna. Is it just going to be in uh, German, I guess? Uh, or how does that work, like the, that language part? That's, that's a great question. Uh, the first work on Europe was in English. Second one was in English. The third one needed a little help because we thought that we were growing enough and we wanted to try to offer also the local language as an option. So we had real-time translation in Spanish. So the event was in English, but we had real-time translation in Spanish. And uh, at that, for the last work camp, I was dealing with volunteers and I had many volunteers that were bilingual. So they were speaking English and, and Spanish. They were making, they were our bridges. Uh, but we had a, a few volunteers that were Spanish only. So we had first to bridge to them and then, but it was amazing because it doesn't matter. As soon as you are somewhere all together with the same purpose and with the same spirit and sharing values, you find a way. Like you point, you talk slowly. English is pretty much a uh, common language. Uh, and you know, we're in the tech scene. So at the very end, English helps. Um, in the future, it would be nice, would be great to offer a multi-language experience because if we really want to go and we want to um, address a wider audience and to open up even more, we need to start looking into that and we know that we need to get there. So, you know, uh, it would be really, really great to get to the point where uh, to do like very, very big conferences where you have multiple languages covered from all the angles. So you have speakers that they speak their own language if they want, or English, and you have real-time translation for everybody that wants to have it, that would be great. And we'll get there. We don't have any plan to stop the conquering. So, huh? WordCamp UN. WordCamp UN. Yeah, well, slowly but steadily. <laughs> Thank you. That was really inspiring. Uh, I'm curious because you've you've been to uh, WordCamp Europe and WordCamp US and the previous one. Um, is there a difference in the type of content that's being presented 
on the other side of the ocean from what is being presented here and the type of conversations that happen? Yes. Like every single work camp is different from the others. Um, every work camp, by the definition of, of work camp itself, so it's very tied with the land and with the cu local culture, express the local culture. So when you, go to, uh, when you go in Europe and you go to different work camps, you have different feelings from different work camps. Uh, the way uh, the rooms are, a convention center like this, probably there are a few in Europe, but they are designed in a different way. Here you have super high ceilings. In Europe, you tend to have a little lower. Uh, here you have everything is designed for ex to be super accessible. In Europe, it's a little more challenging, even if we're, we're getting there. Uh, all of those little details, they highly impact the experience of work camp. Uh, in here, you have people that they really like to network a lot outside. Work camp Europe, you have more focus on sessions. So usually people rush in at the very beginning of every session, then they rush out at the end of every session. And that changes the experience that you have. Uh, but I would not say that one is better than the other. I would just say that they're very different and uh, they are equally good. Um, of course, you can always improve the experience. And if you focus on your own experience and you, you give like, uh, these are things that they didn't go as, I, as we expected and we want to improve it, that is the natural uh, evolution to get that uh, what was the term? The exponential growth that we were looking for. Thanks. Another one. And do you have any comment about World Camp Asia? Uh, yes, I know nothing about it. <laughs> <laughs> no, what do you think of the idea? The idea mm. is to have a World Camp in Asia. What do you say? <laughs> World Camp Asia? Yeah, have yeah. a World Camp in Asia. I have no idea, I never heard of it. It's the first time that I hear and I, I cannot address that. Okay. Um, but why not? Then mm -hmm. we just need Work Camp Africa. Mm -hmm. I would love to have Work Camp Africa. And Work Camp Antarctica. <laughs> first, we need Work Camp America. How about that? Yeah, nice, good. <laughs> okay, thank you. Welcome. Uh, well, thank you very much. Uh, give yourself a round of applause and uh, let's go for lunch.